Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1970s Seattle Pilots What If Scenario. Today's matchup is between the Kansas City Royals and the Seattle Pilots at Brainiac Stadium. On the mound for the Royals today is Les Rohr, whose record is 7-10 with a 4.03 ERA. And pitching for the Pilots is Jerry Stevenson, whose record is 4-7 with a 5.16 ERA. Okay, we have reached the end of June, and we are 3-7 and seven in our last 10 games, which means that we have to win today to finish the month at 500. Um, what was once a promising month has kind of turned the corner uh, in, uh, in a way in which I thought maybe we could uh, you know, climb out of this tailspin, but now I kind of feel like this is who we are. I mean, we're eight games under 500. We're 10 games back. Um, you know, we are exactly what our Pythagorean says we are. And as we close out the month today, uh, one way or another, uh, we are absolutely going to be sellers at the trade deadline. Um, and I have some ideas on that. And we'll talk about the trade deadline here uh, one more time before we... Uh, um, get to the uh, all-star break and maybe at that point is when we'll um, start wheeling and dealing so we do have that to look forward to and i'm thinking i might create a separate video uh which might be kind of long and boring but um it will just be nothing but us uh getting rid of some of our so-called assets now uh since we're talking about separate videos after today's game uh, there will be a separate video in which we'll take a look at the standings through the month of June. And we'll also do a all-time, uh, baseball's all-time leaders uh, video in which we will take a look at um, all the uh, leaders all the way through the 1970 season, updated with the two seasons of Sim that we are playing. So it may be altered a little bit from what it would have been in real life in 1970. And I think that'll be an interesting uh, way to mix it up a little bit instead of just always looking at the league leaders. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with uh, today's video. Uh, appreciate everyone following along, like and or subscribe to the channel. We are facing another left-hander that's gonna be challenging. Uh, Jerry Stevenson's on the mound. Um, he's had some success versus the Royals. They're batting 256 against him in 97 plate appearances. All the bullpen is available today. <clears throat> Our lineup versus Les Roar. I mean, we've, we've lost two games in a row against the Royals, including against a left-hander. So why not mix it up a little bit? Now, Darren Johnson is listed as tired, so we're going to rest what is maybe our second best left-handed pitching hitter. Um, we're going to give him the day off. We will have Mike Keegan at first. Duffy Dyer will catch today. And Joe Pepitone will be in left field. So we've added two lefties uh, to the lineup versus a left-hander. And why not? We may as well mix it up and see if we can't find a way to break through against um, the Royals pitchers who've been really good against us for some reason. Okay, let's take a look at the Royals lineup rundown. Batting leadoff in right field is Pat Kelly. Batting second at first base is Mike Fiore. Batting third at second base is Ron Hunt. Batting cleanup back in left field today is Hawk Taylor. Batting fifth and catching is Jim Campanis. Batting sixth at third base is Joe Foy. Batting seventh in center field is Scott Northey. Batting eighth is the shortstop, Jackie Hernandez. And batting ninth will be the pitcher, Les Roar. Okay, we'll take a look here at Jerry Stevenson, making his 17th start. Four and seven with a 5.16 ERA. 64 strikeouts at 83 and two-third innings pitched. Opponents are batting 274 against him. No complete games. By now, you guys know that he's got a pretty good fastball. Uh, topping out at 96 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 40%. That fastball is rated an 88. And he's got a sidearm curve rated an 85. Just doesn't seem to be able to put it together. Overall, 
rated a 79. The 26-year-old right-hander is a free agent at the end of the year. Here is his log. Yeah, I mean, he went four innings giving up five. He went five innings giving up three in his last start uh, versus the Angels. He lost both of those games. If we take a look back, he has started one game this year versus the Royals, giving up four runs in five innings on seven hits. Only walked one, struck out six, but it was a no decision. Okay, we'll take a look here at our defense. So a little bit better when we have Hegan at first. He's got a little more range. Maybe he can make up for uh, Sutherland's shortcomings. Behind the plate, we have a good defensive catcher. It's Duff, uh, D Duffy Dyer. I almost said Danny Duffy. Um, and he's got a, a really great arm, so you can feel good about that. Okay, here we go. Pat Kelly leading it off versus Jerry Stevenson. A 1-0 count. And Kelly hits a fly ball into center field. A.G. making the catch. One out. Next man up is the first baseman, Mike Fiore. And that is a base hit into center field, getting past the glove of Belanger. So a runner on first, one down for Ron Hunt. 0-1 count. There's a ground ball to Sutherland. He does not turn two very often. He will not get it done there. Now, <sighs> Hawk Taylor has killed us this entire series. We're going to intentionally walk him to get to the backup catcher. I mean, we're giving a lot of respect to a, a batter who wasn't even in the major leagues in 1970. He was out of baseball. And yet you can see given the chance here at a full season, he's having a career year. And um, we'll just assume that we can get Jim Campanis batting 167 versus righties. Nope. There's nothing we were ever going to be able to do to prevent that from happening. So it's one nothing. Backup catcher batting under 200 gets a hit. And Joe Foy Rounds out to second. So frustrating. We go to the bottom of the first, down a run. Let's take a look at our lineup. Batting leadoff. At second base is Gary Sutherland. Batting second. Playing third base is Rich Rollins. Batting third in left field is Joe Pepitone. Batting cleanup in right field is Bill Robinson. Batting fifth in center field is Tommy Agee. Batting 6th at first base is Mike Hegan. Batting 7th at shortstop is Mark Belanger. Batting 8th is the catcher, Duffy Dyer. And Jerry Stevenson in the number 9 spot. Okay, let's take a look here at Les Rohr. He is making his 20th start, 7-10. and 10, A 4.03 ERA while he's walked as many as he struck out. Um, he's already thrown 143 innings pitched. Opponents are batting 2.49 against him. Four complete games, two shutouts, including one against us. His fastball tops out at 94 miles an hour, just like Stevenson. Ground ball percentage is 46.7%. Uh, his fastball is a, amazing, rated a 94. His screwball is rated an 87. Overall rated an 84, the 24-year-old left-hander. Arbitration eligible at the end of next year. And as you may have seen on the title card, um, he has lost seven of his last nine decisions. In fact, his last win was against us in that complete game shutout. That is his only appearance against us this year. And since then, he's had nothing but losses and no decisions. He just gave up 12 hits to Minnesota in five and a third. That's coming off of a nine-inning performance that was not a complete game somehow. Um, so I think you could pretty much expect him to pitch really well against us. He, he hasn't won in a while. And he's coming off a terrible performance. So that's pretty much a guarantee that Les Roar is going to pitch a game of his life. Um, this defense is not so great. I mean, Kepanis uh, is rated about the same as Kirkpatrick, but he does have a better arm. Rated an 80. First in left field, below league average. All right. Here we go. Gary Sutherland leading it off. 0-2 count. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. There's just no chance for us. 
And it's, you know, the thing is, like, uh, the Royals were a 500 team coming in to the year. And they're kind of like the opposite of us. Last year, we could not lose. And they could not win. And now, I mean, they are, you know, on the verge of being a contender maybe after next year. Yeah, a 1-2-3 inning to Les Ross. Uh, Roar. We go to the top of the second. Here's Scott Northey. Maybe going to... Ground ball to short. Belanger making the play. Jackie Hernandez getting a start today at shortstop. There's the first K for Stevenson. Two quick outs, and the pitcher, Les Roar, batting 111, gets a base hit. Of course. Why would he not get a hit? Why not give him a double? Pat Kelly popping it up. Well, it might be in fair territory, and it will be caught for out number three. The Royals pitcher gets a hit before anybody on our team does. Bottom of the second, here is Bill Robinson. Line drive to center. Tommy Agee. Ground ball back to the pitcher. And Mike Keegan. Ground ball to short. Unbelievable. Top of the third. Mike Fiore popping it to second base. Caught by the shortstop. I wish there was a way that I could go in here and just say, throw the damn fastball. I don't even care if it's right down the middle. Ron Hunt with a base hit. Well, we've got no choice but to face Hawk Taylor this time. Stevenson throws it up in his eyeballs. It's a comebacker for out number two. And Campanis drove in the game's first run, flies out the center. Bottom of the third. Mark Longer's out. Duffy Dyer. Out, pitcher, out. Fourth inning, Joe Foy with a ground ball to third. Scott Northey striking out on a curveball. Two down, and Jackie Hernandez gets a base hit, which he had to do to get to the pitcher. Pitcher's already got a hit today. Bottom of the fourth. Foul ball. Out number one. Here on the third baseman. So the only run that we're going to score today is going to be unearned. Unbelievable. So stupid. What a ridiculous game. Oops. <clears throat> yep. That'll be our only run today. We're going to go on contact. I'd like to think that if Tommy Ag hits it on the ground, he could beat out a double play if he makes contact at all. The line drive to center. Capitone will tag and score. There's the second under run. So none of this is actually hurting Les Roar. Good job by Ag to uh, get that sack fly at least. And Mike Keegan will fly. Out. All right. Well, we have the lead. It's two to one. Pat Kelly will lead it off. It's the fifth inning. This is usually where. Uh, Jerry Stevenson gets his pants pulled down on the mound and his butt spanked. Kelly flies out. Mike Fiore grounds out to first. And Ron Hunt got a hit today. Hits a ground ball to third. A one, two, three inning. 
Okay, Stevenson looking good, other than the first inning run that was scored against him. Bottom of the fifth inning, here is Mark Belanger. He walks. All right. Duffy Dyer, three for nine on the season. That's a fly ball to left field. We're going to see if Belanger can steal. Not his big thing. Yeah, he's successful. He's three for four. He was caught stealing yesterday's game. Now we can drop a bunt. In theory. No, of course, they're not going to give us that. All right, well, that's it. Yep. God, this game. Unbelievable. Sixth inning. I mean, I think we have to let Stevenson pitch. I mean, it's all righties. That's a double. Okay. And then the walk. No, it's a pop-up. Runner on first, one out. Joe Foy strikes out. Now, Stevenson did walk six batters in his last start, so this might be the game where they try to even that season out. Oh, no, of course it's not. There's the walk. And now Hernandez's base hit will give him a run. Nope, striking out. Well, we got Stevenson through six. I think we can feel good about that. Can we manufacture a run that's earned? The answer is no. The game just won't allow it to happen. And we did not hit one single home run at home this series with those 350 alleyways. It's ridiculous. Okay, so Stevenson got 100 pitches through six innings. He leaves with the lead. We've got three lefties coming up. So we'll bring in Jack DeLauro, who pitched in his first game come on, yesterday. Gave up a hit, a walk, struck out two. Giving him a shot today. Striking out the pitcher. What's his fastball? Oh, doesn't have one. He's got a two-seamer, I guess. All right. Fly ball for Pat Kelly. And Fiore batting 162 versus lefties. Lines out to center. Good job by DeLauro. We go to the bottom of the seventh, and Tommy Agee will lead off. Look at the in-game stats. Agee's got the game-winning RBI, technically. Lining out the right. Even grounding out. Belanger grounding out. Okay. Eighth inning. We're going to bring in our right-handed setup guy. It is Fred Galatting. We will also bring in a defensive replacement at third. Aurelio Rodriguez. Ron Hunt. Brown ball to second. Sutherland, our weak spot, makes the play. Frickin' Hawk Taylor, man. I hate this guy. And a comebacker. Second time Taylor said a comebacker today. Two down. And the catcher, Campanis. To pop it up. Good job by Fred Gladding. If Belanger can make the catch, he does. Bottom of the eighth. Here's Duffy. And a base hit for Dyer. Third hit of the game. First one since the uh, fourth inning. Fred Gladding did his gerb. We'll bring in Jesus Alou. Turn on the hit and run. Something he does very well. Stay on the double play. Doesn't matter if he line drives it to center. So he will not be scoring. 
base hit for Sutherland. He got his one hit versus the lefty. Yep. Unbelievable. Okay. We're going to the ninth inning. Time to bring in the closer. We're going to put Alou in right field. And Miggy Magic will come in. He's been not so good. Uh, he's made one blown save, but he's got two losses in relief, including blowing the opportunity in his last appearance in game one of the series. We got the best defense we could have in there, except for Kelly. Another comebacker to the pitcher. I thought for sure that would be an error. Scott Norvey will fly out to center. And we're down to the final out. It is Jackie Hernandez with the pitcher spot up next. Yeah, I mean, that had to happen. There's no way that was not going to happen. We'll guard the lines. Here come the lefties. Yep. Oh, I'm glad I guarded the lines. Nice. And here's where they tie it up. I don't... Oh, this is where they win it! Oh, this is where they win it. Okay, here we go. I was like, why would they do that? There we go. Oh, nope, that might be it. It was all for nothing. Pilots win. Two to one. Handshakes, butt slaps, sloppy steaks. Both runs were unearned. We do finish the month uh, with a 500 record, which is better than nothing. Uh, and we'll flip the month to July. We're going to play the Indians next. Um, we will skip the standings because we're going to do that in a separate video. We will look at the headlines. There were no trade offers. Oh, there's a trade. We won't look at it. We just need to. This is going to be a big trade. Four-player deal. Transactions. Let's find out. Oh, no way. The Braves have traded Hammer and Hank to Oaktown. He's on the team. That's good. He's 90. 90 rated at age 36. Batting 287 this year. Not great defensively. Only made one error. He's got five outfield assists. Oh, that's at first. I'm sorry. Um, oh, yeah, he's bad. He's bad in... Well, it means his war is even. Okay. Well, that's crazy. In return, Oakland gives up George Lazarique. He made four starts this year. Um, a pretty good pitcher by these game standards. He's in double A for the Bravos. Bill Dancy, shortstop, eats a Burger King. Oh, he's the manager here of the Pilots, in fact. Um, shortstop with a 92 rating, so that's a great get. And then maybe the best player in the return is a very young George Hendrick. Wasn't in the majors until 1971 or 72. Based on that card, and he actually gets promoted to double A. Great defensively in left field. And, well, everywhere in the outfield is acceptable. Doesn't have a good arm, but great range, great fielding. Maybe that arm will develop. Okay, that's a really great trade between the two teams. Um, I can't believe the Braves are out of it. That's weird. Uh, Dalton Jones also gets injured for two weeks. Sam McDowell, uh, bruised ankle for one start. And Ken Reynolds will miss the rest of the season for the Phillies. Another Phillies starter. 
Oh, actually, he's, he was in the minor leagues. He has not started this year. Okay, let's pull up the box score and get out of here, and then we will come back and do the standings and all-time league leader video. I'm excited for that. Uh, I enjoy looking at that kind of stuff. I mean, player of the game, I guess we'll give it to Jerry Stevenson. I mean, both runs were unearned thanks to Joe Foy's error. If that error had not happened, we would not have won today's ball game. We would have lost one to nothing. We only had four hits. Uh, Jerry Stevenson pitches very well. One of those walks was uh, intentional. Um, he gets the win. He's five and seven. Miguel Fuentes made it look tough, but he does get his second save of the year. Um, and that will do it. We will be back shortly with a second video. Until then, everyone have a great day.